So a new law is set to go into motion in California if nothing else changes. And I, as I told you at the beginning of the show, show, a little disclaimer, you're not going to believe what I'm telling you right now because it is so audacious and so insane. You're going to think I'm exaggerating for the purposes of, of clicks or promoting an episode or whatever. And oh, that that were so. Oh, that that were true, that I was just merely selling out to try to promote a platform rather than telling you exactly what is going on right now in California. So unfortunately, there's a new bill that allows you to kill your baby up to a month past its birth being considered right now in California. So I'm gonna show you an opposition paper to be sure, very, very left-leaning, the Sacramento Bee and what they have to say about this thing so that you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt, this isn't me telling you this, this is the actual people promoting this nonsense telling you this. So here's that article. Assembly Bill, otherwise known as AB 2223, authored by Assemblywoman Buffy Wicks of Oakland, aims to shield women and other birthing people. Don't you love that, other birthing people? What are you even talking about? From criminal and civil liability in the event of a miscarriage, self-induced, or criminal abortion or infant death due to pregnancy-related issues. We'll get back to that in a moment. And it goes on to, get, uh, to say this, quote, on Tuesday, hundreds of protesters are expected to turn up at the Capitol to protest the bill, including the congregations of several California churches. So by the way, it better be more than several California churches. It should be every single Christian church in California showing up on the steps of, of the Capitol as this bill is being uh, considered. Uh, however, I, I, I happen to think that it's probably gonna be far less than that. So here's the deal. We, we need to dig into the terminology of the bill and to talk about the tactics of the left to actually help you understand what in the world is going on here and how this could, how we could conceivably live in a world where something like this is being considered so that you will, so that you will know that, that this is actually happening. So uh, the first thing that I want to point out to you real quickly um, at the expense of being ad hominem, but you decide for yourself, is that the left has the tendency to lie, okay? So this bill is intended to keep people from being criminally prosecuted if they miscarry a baby. Now, a couple of things here. All right, so there is not a single pro-lifer on the planet that believes that a woman that miscarries a baby should be criminally charged for miscarrying their baby. Not a single pro-lifer on the planet has ever said such a ludicrous statement, but the talking points from the left is that that's what this bill is for, is to protect women from radical pro-lifers. So what we're going to do is institute a bill that says that you will not be criminally negligent up to a month after the birth of your child for their death, okay? So we're to believe that right now, good women around the world, around the US uh, specifically, uh, and specifically in California, are, are right now volunteering at their church, giving most of their money away to charity, and, and, and then also serving at goodwill, just to you know, you know, put in that kind of secular charity piece to it too. Uh, doing everything they can with all of their free time to raise their kids, educate their kids in a healthy and respectable manner and giving away to charity and doing all of these wonderful, beautiful things. And then they just so happen to miscarry their baby and pro-lifers want to throw them in jail, which is total nonsense. So of course, this bill is already misleading people with lies because there is no such thing that exists. There's no such thing that exists even in American jurisprudence. It is impossible to prosecute a woman for miscarrying a baby. It doesn't exist. So what is this bill really all about? Well, I lead you to a person named in the article in the Sacramento Bee that is kind of the, the test case for why this bill is even being promoted in the first place. And this is a woman named Adora Perez. And again, if you go down to our sources, you can see this full story and you'll see Adora Perez named in the article. So unlike the scenario that I just painted for you, Adora Perez wasn't volunteering at church, giving her money away to charity and helping raise her children in a healthy and functional manner. In fact, Adora is a third generation meth head. Adora has had nine children, all of which who have been taken away from her from the state. Her most recent child, the child in question, was stillborn. 
And then officers arrested her and sent her to jail for this. Why did they send her to jail for this? Not because the baby was stillborn, but because the baby had OD'd on meth and that's why it died. And so Adora Perez was criminally charged with the death of her child. Now to suggest anything other than that, this is absolutely a case that deserves criminal pro prosecution um, is, it's not only is it obvious, it's kind of like, why would you believe anything other than that? It's hard for me to believe that even the most liberal people, now leftists for sure, because they don't believe in actually rational truth, uh, but even the most liberal people would disagree with the fact that Adora Perez deserves, deserves to go to jail, because of course, of course she does. So we're not actually talking about people who just accidentally miscarry babies. We're talking about people who are criminally negligent in the death of their babies. But of course, this bill is being proposed because it's seen as an injustice that Adora Perez had to go to jail for the death, for the death of her child. And so, of course, this opens up the floodgates for an incredible amount of, of issues, not the least of which is exactly where do we draw the line in, in this whole criminal negligence. So I want to bring you to the next piece of this, of this puzzle, which is this, is that the left intentionally obscures language. They intentionally are overbroad so that they can get away with lying about things. Before I show you the actual language of the bill, I want to show you something in the article real quick so that, that you can understand what I'm talking about. Because the article right there, not written, written from a sympathetic perspective, gives us exactly the kind of thing that I'm talking about. So, so check this out. So, and I quote, critics have focused on the term perinatal death. The perinatal period is defined by the California Welfare and Institutions Code as being the period from the establishment of pregnancy to one month following delivery. So the baby's one month old out of the womb. In response to those concerns, Assemblywoman Wicks agreed to amend the bill to specify that it only applies to perinatal deaths stemming from pregnancy-related causes. So in response to some of the kickback uh, to this bill as it was originally proposed, the congresswoman had to change and get more specific in the bill to just say, hey, you can't kill your baby um, for any reason a month in to them being born. You know, uh, you can't just do that. And so she had to whittle down and be more specific and just say uh, pregnancy related causes, right? So it's pregnancy related causes that if your baby dies because of those things, you can't be pro criminally prosecuted for that. Now, let me just step aside for just a moment and just say something that I think is important to note throughout everything that we're talking about today, is that this bill is absolutely horrific. And I'll continue to show you just, just why here in just a moment. Uh, the bill is barbaric, it's horrific, and it should be destroyed. It should be burned upon a thousand fires, all right? But, uh, but I also think it's worth mentioning here that the vast majority of people in America who don't, who, I guess I would say this, the people who are not pro-abortion but they are pro-choice, who make that very, like, I think, silly and ridiculous and absurd contention that you can be that kind of person, um, do not understand that when you murder a baby in the womb, when you sever them limb from limb, you break their spinal cord and you suck them out of the mother's womb with a vacuum, that you are actually doing something as equally barbaric as killing a baby a month after they were born. There is literally no difference. Once a baby is conceived and it is in the womb and you kill that baby, you are doing something just as barbaric as what this bill would propose, right? Especially in its original language where the woman didn't even want to specify that it had to be, um, you know, pregnancy related, that, uh, pr that the suggestion here, and we'll get into this in a moment, the suggestion here is that the mother didn't do anything to purposefully kill the baby. Um, I, so suffice to say, I, I hope we remember that the abortion lobby is in the business of barbaric murderous uh, actions, uh, much like what this bill is already proposing, but because the baby is out of the womb and we see it, it becomes a little bit more real to us. But the fact that you see it with your physical eye doesn't make it any less damaging and any, any less deadly for the baby in, in the womb. So I just, I wanna, I wanna put that out there. 
However, let's dig into the language of the bill real quick so that we can show you how they're being overbroad and purposefully using the logical fallacy of being over of overgeneralization in order to deceive. So according to the language of the bill already, we've got birthing people. Now that's just totally absurd, obviously, and so ridiculous. What kind of people give birth except for women? There aren't any. That there are no aliens that exist as far as I know. I mean, that's Joe Rogan, maybe Walsh, other conspiracy theorists out there, but as far as I know, I mean, get with Kyrie, whatever. But as far as I know, there are no aliens right now. There are only women who give birth to, to people. So, uh, so birthing people already is ridiculous. And now we're protecting birthing people from criminal and civil liability in the event of a miscarriage. Okay, fine. And then the next one is a little bit tr troubling. Self-induced or criminal abortion, okay? So I wanna take it real slow here. So self-induced or criminal abortion. So what would that include? That might include things that are, that are typically, probably shouldn't be, but are typically legal, like the, uh, the abortion pill and, um, and other means like that, that suffice to say, just things that are legal right now within the system. So these are, these are, uh, these are self-induced, right? But also any form of abortion that is criminal. Now, again, we're talking about one month after the fact. So any type of abortion that you seek, essentially one month after the fact, would be legal. Now, I, I don't know how to say that other than what is right there staring you in the face so that you will understand, well, Reed, maybe there's this and maybe that, and maybe it means that it says, any abortion that is self-induced or that is criminal, you cannot be civilly held liable for that. I mean, wake up, people. This, if that doesn't just absolutely scare the bejesus out of you, whatever that is, I don't know what will. But let's look at the final line there because this, this is the one that I think is probably the most disturbing, even more so than that second one. Because even this last one is a little bit misleading. Infant death due to pregnancy-related causes. So what exactly is a pregnancy-related cause, you may ask? You know what a pregnancy-related cause could be? Um, you know, Stress is caused by a pregnancy. Uh, undue financial burden is caused by a pregnancy. Well, I mean, hunger is actually caused by pregnancy too. So when a baby's born, they, those poor defenseless little welches, they keep on crying out for food and it doesn't give you any time to watch Judge Judy. So you have to hear those pitiful whimpers more and more and more, it adds stress to your life. So some might say, um, you know, that you know, a baby being hungry is kind of a pregnancy related issue. And so if you just let your baby sit there and starve, well then, hey, uh, but, but, I, but I feel that the reminder is in order yet again, ripping a baby limb from limb and severing its spinal cord in a mother's womb is, is just as barbaric here. It's almost as if we desperately need to regain an understanding of being made in the image of God because we step so deeply away from religion in the American West. And that the further we step away from that, the more barbaric we get. But we've listened to the extortion on the left so much that we feel like we're not serving the rights of women unless we fight to make sure we can kill our baby. You can catch brand new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Uberman every Monday and weekly bonus episodes to keep you thinking throughout the week. But you have to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new episodes drop. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like this video and share it with friends.